What's going on today, guys? Yesterday, I posted a video, this video right here, asking you guys what you guys want to see. And in the video, I uh, put um, a picture of rep representing pretty much all the species that I have. And I wanted you guys to comment what you guys want to see more. So I'm going to go check out the comments right now to see what people are wanting to see. Looks like there's only five comments right now. Yeah, it looks like there's only five. Okay, so the first first person is talking about Pelieris. She wants to know about the overall care, personality, and socialization. Okay, I'll try to do that. Kurt. He's speaking about outside enclosures. Uh, Kamisha. She's talking about Lacerdas. Mm. A shout out to Kamisha Reynolds. And I gotta give a shout out to Linda. She just she watches and comments on every video. And she like she really does like everything that I post. So Anyway, she's going to win no matter what I do a video on because she likes to watch pretty much all of them. And the last one was Oscillator Euros. So it's, it's no um, one way. It's pretty much everything. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do a video on today. Um, I might have to hold off on a Jewel Lacertus. Actually, I got some babies I might show because um, I'm going to be posting them on the website for sale soon. But I'm getting some adults in and I want to show you guys the adults so you can see the true beauty of them, how big they get. And some of them have good attitudes and some of them don't have good attitudes. But um, it's because they haven't been worked, they haven't been worked with that much. So some of them are naturally going to be calm and some of them need some work. But um, yeah, I'm going to do a more detailed video on Lacerda later once I get the adults in. Um, I have some juveniles here right now and they they super flighty so I'm not going to mess with them. But the babies I might show today because I'm going to be posting some of them. Um, Pelieris. Mm -hmm. Overall care and feeding. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go with that one today. It's a little bit easier and faster. And the outside enclosures. It's all, it's all going to depend on where you live at. Because what what's, what's good for me might not work for you. I live in Nevada, so it's hot most of the year. Uh, and I make it. Make spaces for them to get out of the sun. Um, isolated, isolated euros. I might do that one tomorrow. I'm not gonna show the adults or mess with the adults because all my adults are wild caught, so I don't like to stress them out too much. But I show the babies. So I handle them. Show you them. Cause I haven't showed them in a while. Actually, gotta clean their cages as well. So I might do a two in one, a, a cleaning and a showing you. Um, the five that I have left. But yeah, so let's get to the Pele Harris. And we'll do the Euros tomorrow. And I'm going to show a little bit of the Lacertas today, the babies. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to post them on, online. I probably just post one picture and because they all look exactly the same and I can't sex them. So I'll probably just post one picture and then um, put the price on there and just ship them out as people buy them. But yeah, let me get to the Pelieris and then I'll throw the Lacerdas in the middle somewhere. But let's get to it. Alright guys, we made it outside. Well, to the garage actually. Um, we're going to start off with the, how I have them set up. It's not the only way you can set them up, but um, it is the way I'm keeping them. I'm keeping them in screen cages. 
because I have them in my garage and they get very hot in the garage and they like to climb. So I got uh, little sticks in here cut halfway and they do have spiny tails. Most lizards with spiny tails, they, they would like to hide in rock crevices. Um, so I got rocks on the bottom of each one of them like that and a little bit of it's a have a sand and um vermiculite mixture on the ground to make it look like natural dirt let me see if i can show it in here looks more like natural dirt and it gives them places to go hide in there as well um this right here this is my biggest one and with most iguanas even even if you work with them daily, they're gonna be flighty, especially when they're young like this. This being my biggest one, he is the commons. And he's the one, if you, on my Instagram, this is one I mostly take pictures of because I can get him sometimes. See right now, even right now, he's flexing a little bit. Sometimes he'll calm down and he'll actually come to me. But I don't like to push the limits. But usually with, with age and size, as they get bigger, they, they naturally calm down. He's not too bad. I used to work with him every day. But what I don't like to do is grab them because it gives them a bad feeling um, for the next time. So he just climbed on top of the cages. So I'm just trying to guide them back to the cages. Let's see if I can get them go back the other way. So another trick I can do is because they're chained on the tongs, what I can do is I can grab a cricket. grab a cricket and then I can coach him. See where he is. And I can get him to come back that way. And that's how I get him on my hands most of the time as well. So instead of chasing him and stuff like that, it's good to get him trained on. Um, the tones, and you can you can um, coach them to go wherever you want them to go. So now I got them back in this cage. And if I didn't have a phone in my hand or the, I mean, I wasn't filming, that's how I usually get them on my hand as well. And it, it works with all of them. Well, most of them. She will be the next. Um, Tamus, even though she's still very wild, um, she's the next one. Up. She's very food motivated, so it's easy to train him that way. So he almost got, he almost escaped, but being that I trained him on the tongs, it was easy to get him back into the enclosure. But the way let me finish um, talking about how how I have them set up. Again, I have them in a screen cage. I have rocks on the bottom with some dirt. The dirt is um, sand and vermiculite mixed. Uh, I feed them inside of the feed bowl so it's less likely for them to ingest any sand. And I have uh, some little sticks that I bought at Home Depot. I think they're two by twos. And I just cut them in half and I laid them at an angle so they can have something to climb on. Um, Leo, he actually has a branch. Um, but anything they can climb on is fine. Uh, and they climb on, they, they use the screen a lot as well. As you can see, most of them is on the screen. Even if you have like a full tree in here, they're gonna still be on the screen. See, she's using her little stick. She's using her little stick. She have a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, dried up greens that she kicked out. But for the ones that I don't have the dirt on the bottom, I had a, a box in here with, um, the same mixture of, of vermiculite and sand. And I spray in there when it get very hot and they can go in there, it's like a humid hide and they can cool off in those little hiding spaces just like they would in the wild. 
Because if you um if you see any of these animals, not even just these iguanas, if you see them in a natural habitat, um, they come out early morning, and they hunt, warm up a little bit, and then once they get too hot, they're gonna go hide. So that's why I made these little hiding spots so they can go and get away from the light and chill out and have some natural behavior, even in that one. And these ones do the same thing with the rocks. This this one had a, a different bottom, so. I was able to put uh, I was able to put the dirt all over the bottom, but these ones had a little plastic bottoms, and the screen um, comes directly to where the plastic bottom is, and I don't want them to kick out too much dirt. Even though these ones kicking out dirt as well, as you can see right here. But they eat um, greens. I mostly feed spring mix because it's easy. It's, um has multiple different types of um, greens inside of it and he loved insects as you can see how he reacted to that cricket on the on the tongs um they will eat pinkies if you feed them some of them like it some of them don't um that's another benefit of getting a tongue fed you can get them to try new things because they're so used to eating one thing on the tongs once you offer them something else on the tongs um they will be more likely to go and eat it um, I have UVB up here. It's 10.0. And then I have a regular light just to give them more light. So one of the lights in there is UVB. And another one is just to give them light. And I don't have heat on them because I have them in the garage and I live in Las Vegas. If I put a heat bulb in there, it would be way too hot in here. Um, so they, they, right now my garage get up to like maybe... Sometimes close to 100 degrees in here. And then they, if it get too hot, they, they always go inside of their little hides. And I spray it and I mist in here. So on these ones, I mist the dirt. And so the, look, at, <laughs> he's hungry. The lights just came on a couple minutes ago. It's supposed to be a girl. I'm supposed to have one, two, three pairs. Um, but they're still young, so it's hard to know for sure. I know Leo is a male for sure. But I have a full bow in each one of them. It's a, a cat food bowl, and it's uh, very slippery, so I can put feeders inside of there, like super worms and um, stuff that can't crawl, like really jump or anything. I just let the crickets go anywhere. That's why I had the screen cages, and they, they love to chase the crickets around inside of here. Um... Again, you can feed bananas. You can feed um, different type of greens. So I like to use the spring mix because it's easy and I have a lot of animals that eat it. Um, but you can give them like uh, collard greens, mustard greens. You can um, you can give them tortoise pellets. Like I have Missouri tortoise up here, right there. And I just take a cup full of it and I let it let it get um, soggy. And I just put it in there and they just eat it. So I try to vary it as much as possible. They eat super worms, meal worms, um, wax worms. Uh, some, of them, some of them don't like the horn worms, but I do offer it to the ones that do eat it. Um, some of them won't eat them. Um, and that's about, about it. Um, dubia roaches, crickets, pretty much any insect. That um, got a bitter dragon to eat, they will eat. And they just a little bit more heavy on greens because they're iguana. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them some greens right now. And I'm using an organic spring mix. And I just give them like a half a handful each. And they go through it pretty well. But you, as you can see, it is some dried up in there, so it's a little bit over the amount that they will, will actually utilize. But that's better than not enough. If you want them to grow faster, you can feed them more protein. So you feed them more insects, which I'm going to do after uh, the winter. I'm going to be pumping them up real heavy. And, um, and then uh, I'm still going to be giving greens as well. Just going to pick up the 
amount of the amount of um, the amount of insects that I'm feeding. Leo, Leo and this girl will eat it out of my hands, and also um, Liliana, she will eat it out of my hand as well. Let's show you Leo. Hmm. Oh boy. These two are already picking at theirs. I used to break it up into smaller pieces for them, but it's not necessary anymore. Anytime I feed them like anything, like um, something special, I like to feed them on the tongs. So, so when I get into situations like when Leo was just climbing on the top, when they see those tongs, they looking, they expecting it um, to be something good on there. And I can I could have got them in there without even a cricket on the tip. They would just follow the tones. This one is one of the wildest ones. Oh, I forgot to show you um Bella. Her name is Bella. She'll eat out of my hands as well. Well, she'd make a liar out of me. There she goes. This is Liliana. She was the first female that I got. It was supposed to be female. I'm gonna just say, say their names. Is, by the name, you'll know what sex I think it is. Um, this is Liliana. Liliana don't be eating her greens as much as everybody else. That's why she has so much dead greens on the bottom. Or uh, dried up greens, I should say. And this is uh, Draco. This is supposed to be a male. I have, it, I have a female, male, female, male in the pattern. So that the, you know, the smaller males are not getting stressed out by the other males next to them. If they're actually males, this one usually runs away. This is Draco. I'm gonna try to give him some. Look, he's really threatened. He got a little uh, threatened posture. Yeah, he really don't want to get bothered. Like I said, with age, they usually calm down. But everybody's eating. I'm not doing calcium today. Usually I sprinkle some calcium on top of the greens, but I don't do it every day. It's like every other day or two to three times a week. But yeah, that's the Paleoris iguanas and how I keep them. Um, this setup might vary in the winter. I might put a heat, heat bulb on top because it'll get too cold in here, depending on if they're um, going down to sleep or not. If they're not going down to sleep, um, I'm going to put a heat bulb. If they look like they're getting sleepy and going to be going down for uh, for the winter, I'm not going to add the heat. I'll just keep the UVB the way it is and let them get their rest and wake up in the spring so that I can start pumping them up for um, next year. Well, the year after that, so 2022. It's possible to get them up to size in about a, in by next year breeding time, but it might not be that healthy. So I'm probably gonna go the slow route, and I have a um, I have a line on getting an adult pair. So I might get a buy that adult pair, and then I can let these guys go ahead and grow slow, so they can be. 
so they can reach that size as healthy as possible. But I got the Lacertas over here. Let me, uh, I got them in this bin so I, for the video. Um, hold on just a second. Let me get it. All right, here go the Lacertas. Well, this is five of them. I have uh, two more from a different clutch. Um, they're starting to shed already. That one you can see shedding. That one is a wild type right there. It's 66% probable head from melanistic, which is the black animal like that. These guys are very, very flighty. Um, I put this little um, lid in here so they can go under there when they feel threatened or something. But um, let me see if I can get one up. And they will drop their tails too, so being careful to just let them climb on my hand versus squeezing them. And if you get them at this size and you and you handle them like this, pretty soft, they'll be calm just like a bearded dragon. I promise you. But the thing is, at this size, they're not as calm as a bearded dragon. Even though you can't have bearded dragons that are pretty feisty. And I can just got them in here also. It's a pretty basic setup. It's not going to be there. How I'm going to be keeping my dose at all. I'm going to try to make it look as naturalistic as possible. I got this one up a little bit. There you go. A little jet black bullet. Like I said, handle them gently, just like this. And if you do this often, then you have a real calm animal. These guys, they eat fruit. Um, they almost like a blue tongue skin kind of. They eat fruit. They eat insects. Some of them will eat greens at certain times. Um, my um, my juveniles, they eat pinkies sometimes. I feed them frozen thaw pinkies. Um, you can even feed them crested, um, crested gecko diet. They're like a weird mix of a lot of different lizards. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. There you go. Just pure black. Look at the eye. <laughs> He's pretty calm right now. There should be one more in here for uh, I think there's one more black one in here somewhere. I'm not sure he is. I thought it was one more. Four. Six. Oh, he's right there. See him? It's right there. 
So one, two, three, four black ones and one um, 66% probable hit. I'm gonna put this lid back in here. I'm gonna give them a spray down. I'm keeping them on Cocoa Husk. I'm gonna give them like a two or three inch layer so they can they can crawl through it as a hiding space. And I got this little lid in there so they can go under there as well. See them drinking off the wall. Little tongues are like a gecko. But yeah, that's the Lacerda's. Um, I got a total of seven. Yeah, seven. I got. Two more black ones from a different clutch and I have these five so I think I'm gonna um, post them on on the website so if you guys are interested uh, make sure you do your research first um, I explain a little bit how I keep them but there's a lot of information out there that may work better for you um, but for right now this little simple setup will be perfect all you need to do is mist them down so they can drink or give them a water bowl i like the spray because most lizards won't drink still water most so i spray them about two or three times a day and it's open open to open top so and it's dry out here so it dries out pretty fast so that's why i spray them three times a day and um it's some cocoa Cocoa, um, cocoa husk, and they um, this hold a little bit of moisture, so it keeps them a little bit humid, so it's better for them to shed. You see, they're still drinking. They just went in a little hide. Even their tongues are black. But all right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to do an outside enclosure on a different day. And I'm going to do the year of mastics tomorrow. Because you can see, I do need to clean their cages. So I might do the video today and just post it tomorrow. But um, I'll, I'll talk about them in that video. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, more videos to come. I got an unboxing Got three dragons coming. I have my light bulb should be here so I can finish the racks. And also I'm gonna crunch down and finish that cage over there. And I'm gonna put my um, third pair of your maxes together, the oscillated ones. Um, so maybe I'll combine that with, cause I gotta touch them to get them out of those cages. And then I can show you some bigger, bigger. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I can show you some um, sub adults so you guys can see. Um, a little bit how they turn out but that was a video on the Paleurus cystinosaur Paleurus spiny tail iguanas and also the jewel lacerta timon lapidus all right guys you have a good one